A common misconception about the Rubik's Cube is that only people with a high IQ can solve it. This is actually not true, and although there are over 43 quintillion possible ways a Rubik's Cube can be scrambled, all of them can be solved with this simple technique I'll be showing you today. You don't need any knowledge in math, and with a little practice, you'll be able to solve your cube in no time. So allow me to show you how to solve the classic 3x3 Rubik's Cube. Before we get into the actual solution, there's a couple things you need to know about the cube. So a Rubik's Cube has six sides, because it's a cube. And on each of those sides is a different color, at least when it's solved. The six colors are white, yellow, blue, red, green, and orange. Typically, when we solve a cube, we see the yellow and the white sides as being separate from the rest. If they were the Earth with an axis going through it, yellow would be the North Pole and white would be the South Pole. So that's how we're going to look at it for today's video. For the other colors, orange is across from red and blue is across from green. You don't really need to know this orientation yet, but in the future it'll be helpful. The second thing you should know is something called Rubik's Cube Notation. When a cuber does a specific set of moves to solve a case, like this, all those moves actually have their own language. The language is actually pretty big, but you'll only need to know four things. You always hold the cube with one face on top and one face in front of you. Not with two faces in front of you like this, but like this. When you hold the cube like this and you turn the right side up like this, that's called R because it's the right side and you're turning it clockwise. The same goes for the left side. If you turn the left side clockwise, which would be down, that's L. If you turn the upper face clockwise like that, that's U. And if you turn the front face clockwise like this, that's called F. So this is R, this is L, this is U, and this is F. So then what if you want to turn the face the opposite way, counterclockwise? Well, it still keeps the same letter, but you just put an apostrophe next to it and we call it prime. So if I wanted to reverse what I just did, I would do F prime and turn the front face counterclockwise, and then U prime and turn the upper face counterclockwise, and then L prime, turn the left face counterclockwise, and then R prime, turn the right face counterclockwise. So those are the four letters you'll need to know for this tutorial. And just remember, if it's the normal letter, it's clockwise. And if it's the letter prime, it's counterclockwise. So now my cube is randomly scrambled. And don't worry that it doesn't look like yours. You'll still be able to follow along, even though we don't have the same scramble. For the first step, you're going to want to make a daisy on the yellow side. So what you'll want to do first is find the yellow center. Centers are these pieces in the middle. And we know that yellow is across from white, so the yellow center will be on the other side. All right, here it is. So once you've found the yellow center, you want to put all of the white edges next to it. So this piece is white, but this is a corner because it has two other colors with it. All of the corners have three colors on them, and all the edges, like this piece, have two colors on them. So we only want to find pieces that have two colors on them, and one of them is white. One of them is already here, so that's good. And we're going to need three more, one that goes here, one that goes here, and one that goes here. So let's start looking around the cube for those pieces. Okay, so here's one on the bottom, here's one on the side, and here's one on the top. If you have any white edges that can easily be moved next to the yellow center, then just do that. So for this one, I'm just going to move it up right there. Keep in mind that although this edge is next to the yellow center, the white piece is on the wrong side, so we need to flip it. I see another white edge is right here, so I'm going to move that up next to the yellow center. And let's see where this edge just went. Okay. So if we were to move this edge up, the other white edge, that's right here, would be taken out. So we can't do that. Instead, we're going to move the top layer that has all the edge pieces and the yellow center on it this way, so that now, when we move this piece up, it has its own space. If you ever stuck with an edge like this one, where it's in the right spot, but the white piece is facing the wrong way, all you're going to have to do is bring that down like this, and then again, turn the upper face so that you can bring it back up. And if the edge piece is down here, you can just turn it up twice, and although it's in the wrong spot, you can just do what I just showed you. So that's how you make the daisy, and now we need to make the white cross. So we want all of these white edges to be around the white center now. 
The reason we put them around the yellow center in the first place is just so we can line them up better, and you'll see why. So we know that white is across from yellow, so since this is the yellow center, white will be down here. So we want the white edges to be here, 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 and here. But the thing to keep in mind in this step is that the other color on the white edges also needs to line up. So as you can see on this white edge in front of me, the other color is blue. So I could move it down to be next to the white center, but the center that it's next to is green, not blue. So to fix that, we need to find the blue center. I'm going to turn the cube. Okay, here's the blue center. And now we need to bring that piece over to the blue center. And now we can bring it down like this. So now the white side is next to the white center, and the blue side is next to the blue center. And we do the same thing for all the other edges. So this white and orange one is already lined up, so we bring that down. This white and red one needs to go above the red center, then we bring that down. And this white and green one needs to go above the green center, which is over here. And now we bring that down. And now we have the complete white cross, and all the edges are correctly lined up with their centers. In this step, we want to complete the white side. So from the last step, we already have the white center and all four of the white edges. So now we just need to do the corners. But just like the edges, we need to also line up the corners with their correct colors. So here's a white corner, but it also has blue and red on it. So we need to bring it over to the blue and red sides. And we know that blue is across from green and red is across from orange. So that'll be on the opposite side. So you'll see that the blue piece is actually on the red side and the red piece is actually on the blue side. But that doesn't matter, it'll get fixed soon. But as long as both of the colors are on these two sides in front of you, it's fine. They can be mismatched. So right now, this corner is above the spot where it needs to be. This corner needs to go down here. So to do that, we're going to use your first algorithm. And it's pretty easy, so don't worry. Just hold the cube like this so that the corner you're trying to move down is on your right in the top. And do these four moves. R, U, R prime, U prime and do that until the corner is aligned. R, U, R prime, U prime. R, U, R prime, U prime. And there you go. Now the corner is in the right spot and the colors on the other sides are matched too. So now we need to do that with three other corners. So let's look. Okay, here's one. And as you can see, it's kind of already in one of the corner spots down on the white side, but it's the wrong one because it has green and orange and this is green and red. But you can't just move it along the top to get it to green and orange because it's not on the top. So to get it out of its spot, just do the same algorithm. R, U, R prime, U prime. Now it's in the top. We can bring it over to the right side and do that algorithm to put it where it goes. R, U, R prime, U prime. And there you go. So here's another corner. This one has white, blue, and orange, so we need to bring it to the blue and orange spot. Now it's above where it needs to go, so you do that algorithm, R, U, R prime, U prime. We're getting pretty lucky, and we only have to do this algorithm once, but it could be like this above the corner, and then you'd have to do the algorithm five times for it to solve. So if you do the algorithm a couple times and it's not solving, you're not doing anything wrong, you just need to do the algorithm a couple more times. So now we're going to find the last corner. It's right here and it's already above where it needs to go. So you do the algorithm. And now we're done with the entire white side. So now we've not only completed the white side, but we've also completed what's called a layer in the cubing world. When we solve a cube, we think of it as having three layers, the top, the middle, and the bottom. And right now, we've just solved the entire bottom layer. So in this step, we're going to solve the entire second layer, or the middle layer. As you can see, we already have the centers from the middle layer in the correct spots, so we just need to get the edges. So an edge needs to go here, an edge needs to go here, one needs to go here, and one needs to go here. So let's look for them. Now, none of the edges we're looking for are going to have yellow on them, because remember, Yellow is only across from white when it's solved. So no yellow piece is ever going to go here because it's not across from white. So we're looking for the remaining edge pieces that don't have yellow on them. So here's one with blue and red. 
Now one of the colors will be on the top and one will be on the front of course. So you're going to want to line up the one on the front with the correct side. So in this case red is on the front. So we're going to want to line it up with the red side. And here is where you need your second algorithm. And by the way, if your edge had blue on the front and red on the top so that it matched up with this side, you don't do this algorithm because that piece needs to go to the right, not to the left. So this is only for the people who have their first edge going to the left. You hold it on the top middle and the place it needs to go is the left and you do this algorithm. U prime, L prime, U, L, U, and then you rotate the cube this way, R, U prime, R prime. And now we've put that edge in the right spot. So now, that was the algorithm you use when you need to move the edge to the left. But what if we need to move the edge to the right, like in this case? We have the blue and orange edge. The orange is pointing towards us and is lined up with the orange side, so that's good. But the piece needs to move to the right, not to the left. So we actually use the same algorithm, it's just righty instead of lefty. So here it is. U, R, U prime, R prime, U prime. Rotate the cube this way, L prime, U, L. Now that edge has been moved to the right where it needs to go. So now let's look for the other edges. Okay, here we see the green and orange edge is right here. It's not in the top layer, and it doesn't need to be here. It needs to be here. So how do we get it out of this side and over to this side? Well, there's two ways to do this. One is to look for the piece that actually goes here. So we have that here. We line the green up with this green. And then you could do that algorithm to put it in here. And the other way to do it takes a little longer, but it also takes less thought process. You just hold it from either of the sides and do one of the algorithms that I just showed you to get it out. So now it'll be somewhere else, and it's right here. So let's say we did it that way. Now we have this edge in the top layer. We rotate green since it's on the front to line up with this green. And we do the algorithm that moves it to the right. U, R, U prime, R prime, U prime. Rotate this way. L prime, U, L. And now it's in the right spot. So the last edge is right here. It's red and green on the front. Green is already lined up. So we do the algorithm that moves it to the left because that's where it needs to go. U prime, L prime, U, L, U, rotate it this way, R, U prime, R prime. Now that edge, as well as all of the other edges, are in their right spots. And the second layer is complete. So now you can see the first and second layers are all solved, and only things in this top or upper layer is what we need to solve. Okay, so for this next step, we're going to want to try to make a yellow cross, just like how we made a white cross in the beginning. So because the cross only contains edge pieces, we're not going to worry about any of the yellow corners, just the edges. So as you can see, in this case, we have a yellow edge here facing up, a yellow edge here facing up, a yellow edge here not facing up, and a yellow edge here not facing up. Those are the only pieces we need to worry about. We don't need to worry about any of these four corners. So if you're only looking at the edges, there's four possible cases you could have. One is a line like this. A line of edges are already solved. One is none of the edges are already solved. So it's just a dot. Some of the corners might be facing up, but the edges in the center is just a dot. Another case is where two edges are solved, but they're on sides right next to each other. So they kind of form an L with the center and the edges. And the last case is that you're lucky and you already have the yellow cross solved. Now if this is the case, do not skip this part because then you won't be able to solve it again if you get any of the other cases. So I'm going to go through the three cases that aren't already a solved cross and show you what to do. And if I'm not at your case yet, just sit tight and we'll get to it soon. So if you have a line that's solved, you're going to want to hold the line so that the edges are to your left and right. Not front and back like this, left and right. Could be like this too, it doesn't matter. And you're going to want to do this, another quick algorithm. F, and then this is the algorithm from before, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime. And that makes the yellow cross solved. If you have an L solved, you're going to want to hold the edges so that they're in the back and the left. And then do this, F again, 
And then this is the same algorithm we've been using, but reversed. U, R, U prime, R prime, and then F prime. And then that solves the cross again. If the only part of the cross that's solved is the center, then you're just going to want to do both of those things back to back. It doesn't matter which order, you just got to do both of them. We'll start with the line by doing F, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime. And as you can see, that gets us to the L case. So now we hold the solved edges in the back and the left, and we do the L case algorithm. F, U, R, U prime, R prime, and F prime. And that's a little bit longer, but we also got the yellow cross solved. Unlike when we were doing the white side, we're actually not going to worry about the yellow corners next. We're going to worry about the yellow edges again. But instead of making the cross, we're going to try to line them up with the correct colors. So as you can see, green is lined up with red here. Blue is lined up with green. Orange is already lined up, so that's great. And red is lined up with blue. So like I said, the orange edge is already lined up with the orange side. But it's the only one that's like that. And every single time, two of them will be able to line up. So you don't actually need to care about this because you can find two others that already lined up. All you have to do is turn the top face until you find the ones that lined up. So I turned it once, none of them line up. Oh, now the blue one lines up, but that's also the only one that lines up, so I'll turn it again. And now the green and red line up, so that's what we want. So if the ones that line up are on sides next to each other, like this, then the ones that don't line up will also be on sides next to each other. So I'm going to show you how to solve these, and if the edges that you already have solved are across from each other, I'll get to that in a second. But since these are the two edges that aren't solved, we're going to want to hold one in the front and one on the left, like this, and do this algorithm. R, U, R prime, U, R, U2, R prime, U. And that just solved the edges that we were looking at and the ones over here are also still solved. So if the edges that are already solved are across from each other, like this red one is lining up with the red side, and the orange one lines up with the orange side, then you're actually just going to want to do the same algorithm twice. So I'm going to hold one of the unsolved ones in front of me, the other one's in the back, and do that algorithm. R, U, R prime, U, R, U2, R prime, U. So now, just like before, two of the edges will be able to line up, but this time they'll be on sides next to each other. So you just go back to this case, hold it like this, and do the original algorithm. R, U, R prime, U, R, U2, R prime, U. And now all of the yellow edges are also lined up with their right sides. So now that we've solved the yellow cross and aligned the yellow edges with the correct colors, there's only the yellow corners left to solve. So there's four yellow corners, one here, one here, one here, and one here, which already happens to be solved. And the first step when solving the yellow corners is to look for one that's in the right spot, but not necessarily solved. And what I mean by that is that the corner just has to be where it should go, but it could be twisted. So this corner here, for example, is an example of that. But if it was like this, not solved, but still in the right spot where it needs to go, that also works. Same thing for if the corner was like this. As long as it's in the spot that it needs to go, but not necessarily solved, that's the corner you're looking for. But I'm going to put this corner back the way I had it so that I don't mess up the cube. And by the way, don't twist the corners like I did, because if you forget the original way it was, the cube will be unsolvable. So what if none of the corners you have are in the spot that they need to be? Like this, for example, as you can see, this corner has red on it, and neither of these two colors are red. This one has blue and orange, but orange is over here. This one has orange and green, so it needs to go here. And this one has red and green, so it needs to go here. So none of them are in the right spot. Well, if this is the case, then you hold the cube from any direction as long as yellow is facing up. You can hold it from any side facing towards you, though. And you do this simple algorithm. U, R, U prime, L prime, U, R prime, U prime, L. And you're going to want to do that algorithm until one of the corners is in the right spot. 
So in my case, this corner is now in the right spot. As you can see, it has green and orange, and these are the orange and green sides. If none of the corners are in the right spot after doing that algorithm, then just do it again or maybe a couple more times until one of them is. But once you have one of the corners in the right spot, remember it doesn't have to be solved, it just has to be where it needs to go, then first of all, you're gonna wanna check if the other corners are in the right spots because if they are, then you're done with this step. If they aren't, then you're gonna wanna hold the corner that is in the right spot in the top right and do the same algorithm again. U, R, U prime, L prime, U, R prime, U prime, L. And then after doing that algorithm once or a couple times maybe, all of the corners should be in the right spots. In our case, these two corners are already solved, and these two corners are in the right spots, but they're not solved. So once you have all the corners in the right spots, resist the urge to just twist them to solve the cube, because that's cheating, and then you won't be able to actually solve it if your friend scrambles it for you or something. So what you're gonna wanna do in this case is actually flip the cube to put the yellow side on the bottom, so the white side will now be on the top, and now the unsolved corners are in the bottom layer. And we're actually gonna be doing the same exact thing we did to solve the white corners in the beginning. So here's what it looks like. You wanna find one of the corners in the bottom layer that's in the right spot but not solved and hold that on the bottom right like this. And then you do that original four move algorithm that I showed you in the beginning for the white cross. R, U, R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime, U prime and now that corner is solved. And at this point, many other parts of the cube will look like they're unsolved, but just trust the process, they'll all be fixed in a second. So now keep holding the cube this way, but rotate the bottom layer until you get to another corner on the bottom that's in the right spot, but not solved. And now you do the same four move algorithm as many times as you need to, to solve this corner. R, U, R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime, U prime. And as you can see, this corner is now solved. And all the other parts of the cube that were mixed up in that stage are now solved too. So in our case, those were the only two corners that were unsolved. So now the cube is just one turn away from being solved. And there you go. I'm gonna do this step again just to make it more clear. So in this case, all four of the corners are in the right spots, but not solved. We know that because the two other colors on the corner that aren't yellow match up with the two sides they're on. And that goes for all of the corners. So now we flip it so that yellow is on the bottom and white is on the top. And we pick any of the unsolved corners, put it in the bottom right, and do that original four move algorithm until it's solved. R, U, R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime, U prime. Now don't rotate the cube to the next one. Instead, just turn the bottom layer until it comes in front of you. Now do that algorithm again. Again, rotate the bottom layer until the next unsolved corner is in the bottom right, and do that algorithm until it's solved. Now that one's solved, so you rotate the bottom again, and now we're solving this corner by doing that algorithm. Now all the corners are solved, and the cube is just one move away. Depending on which way the unsolved corner is twisted, like it could be this way or this way, It'll take more times of doing that algorithm to solve it. So sometimes it'll take two tries and sometimes it'll take four. And those are all the steps to solving the three by three Rubik's cube. Now that I've explained that, I'm gonna do a quick example solve so that you guys can see every step in one go. So now I have a completely randomly scrambled cube and we're gonna start with the first step. So remember, we have to make a daisy surrounding the yellow center, which is right here. So I'm gonna look for the white edges to surround the yellow center. So here's one that I can easily bring up like this. 
and I notice there's another one right here. I can also easily bring that one up. Here's another one, and the other one is right here. So I'm going to do this one first because it would be a little bit easier, but it doesn't really matter. Remember that I can't just move this edge up next to the yellow center because it'll move the other one out of the way. So instead, I have to rotate the top like this. And now when I put this edge up, all of them are still there. So let's find the other one. OK, it's right here. It's where it needs to go, but it's flipped, as you can see. So to fix this, I'm just going to turn the front layer to move it down like that. So now I could bring it up here, but that would move this one out of the way. So instead, I'm going to rotate the top and then move it up. Next, we need to bring all the white edges down to the white center to make the white cross. But remember, we can't just bring them down like this because they need to correspond with the edge that they're next to here. So this white edge has orange on it. So I'm going to bring it to the orange center, which is right here. And now I can bring that down to the white center. So this piece is solved. I'm going to look for the next edge. OK, this one has white and blue on it. So I'm going to bring it to the blue center, which is over here. Now I can move that down. This one has white and green on it, so I'm going to bring it to the green center, move that down. And this one is already on the red center, so I can move that down. And now the cross is solved. Next, we need to solve the corners, but we can't just put them anywhere. We need to make sure they also align with their correct colors, like this one happens to already be solved. So I see another one of the corners is right here. This white corner has orange and green on it, so I'm going to bring it over to the orange and green sides orange and green right here. So this corner needs to go down here. So I hold it above where it needs to go and hold it in the top right like this and do that four move algorithm. R U R prime U prime. And now it's in the right spot. Now we have this corner that has white, green and red on it. So we're going to bring it to the green and red sides, which are right here and here. We hold it in the top right above where it needs to go and do that four move algorithm until it's solved. That one took a lot of times, but it did solve it eventually. Now the last corner is already where it needs to go, but as you can see, it's not solved. And you can't just twist it like this, because then the rest of the key will be unsolvable. So instead, we just have to continue doing that algorithm, but it's OK that it's down here and not here. It'll still solve it. And there you go. Now we finish the entire bottom layer, the white side, and all the pieces are aligned with their correct sides. Now we need to solve the edges in the middle layer. And remember that none of these edges will have yellow on them because yellow is only on the top. So we're looking for all the remaining edges that don't have yellow on them. I see this orange and blue one is right here. So we find where that needs to go, which is right here because it has orange and blue. And then the color that's facing towards us on the edge is the color we need to pay attention to. And we have to align that with the correct side. So in this case, it's already aligned because it's on the blue side. But if it was over here or somewhere, we would just have to turn it to align it like this. And then we do the algorithm corresponding to the way it needs to go. So in this case, it needs to go left right here. So we do the algorithm holding it like this, and we do it with our left hand. And all of these algorithms will be in the description, by the way, which is why I'm not saying them out loud while I'm doing this example solve. And then I notice that this edge is already solved, so that's nice. We don't need to worry about that one. And over here, it looks like we have the red and green edge. Green is facing towards me, so I need to align that with the green side, which is over here. And now it needs to move left, so I do the lefty algorithm. And that edge is now solved. The last edge is already right here. It's blue and red. Red is aligned with the red side. And it's lefty algorithm again because it needs to go left. And now the entire middle layer is solved. Next up, we need to make the yellow cross on top. Remember, there's four possible cases that it can be in. One is just the yellow dot. One is a yellow line solved. 
One is a yellow L solved, which is what we have. And the other case is that all of the yellow edges are already in the right spot and the cross is already solved. But in this case, we have the yellow L. So remember, we need to put the solved edges in the top and the left and then do this algorithm. F, U, R, U prime, R prime, and then F to put that edge in place. Now before we move on to the corners of the yellow cross, we need to align the yellow centers even more with their correct colors. So we need to look for the other colors on the yellow edges, like in this case it's blue, in this case it's orange, and we need to try to line up two of them because two of them will always line up. So I'm just going to turn it until some of them line up. Okay, so now the blue one is lined up with the blue side. This one isn't, but oh, the green one is. So now we have two, the blue one back here and the green one right here that are lined up. And the other case is that the ones that do line up are on edges right next to each other. But we have the ones that are across from each other. So we're going to do the algorithm that solves the edges, but we're going to do it twice. So now that we've done it once, we see which ones line up. And it's going to be the green and the red ones. So now the orange and blue ones don't line up. So we hold it like this with one of them on the front, one of them on the left, and do that algorithm. And now all of the yellow edges also line up with their correct sides. Now we're onto the yellow corners, so we're going to look for one that's in the right spot, but not necessarily solved. So it's not this one, because this one has green on it, and green is over here. It's not this one, because this one has orange on it, and orange is over here. It is this one, because this one is already solved. Remember, it could be twisted as long as it's in the right spot. It doesn't have to be solved, it just has to be there. And if none of them are solved, you just do the algorithm that I'm about to do until one of them is. But you hold the one that's in the right spot in the top right and do this algorithm. And you might have to do that algorithm a couple times until all of the other corners are in the right spot. So let's do it again. And there we go. Now we can see this one is in the right spot because it has red and blue, and it's on the red and blue side. This one's already solved. And this one is also in the right spot. So now that we have all the corners in the right spots, we flip it so that yellow is on the bottom. And we hold one of the unsolved corners in the bottom right. And we do the original four move algorithm until it's solved. The rest of the cube will look messed up, but don't worry. Rotate the bottom layer until you get to the next corner that's unsolved. Put it in the bottom right and do that algorithm until it's solved. Now all of the corners should be solved, and you can just move this layer a couple times, or maybe once, until the entire cube is solved. And there's your walkthrough. If you have any questions about solving the cube, which I'm sure you will, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll try to answer as many of them as I can. I'll cut the video into sections so that you can switch around to specific steps whenever you want. And if you're having trouble solving the cube, there's no need to give up. When I first learned how to solve it, I couldn't get it at first, but I put the cube down and tried a couple days later, and then I got it. So even if it's difficult at first, I'm sure you'll be able to get it soon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'd appreciate a sub and a like if you found this tutorial helpful.